Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. Today we're going to talk about all things admin with respect to adminning your dedicated server. Now in past we have done a video on how to set up and run your own private dedicated server. We've also released videos on how to rent a dedicated server from a host like Pocket Host. In today's video we're going to talk how to admin the actual farm sim dedicated server regardless if it's running on your own hardware or if it's running on rented hardware. On your dedicated server host, when you log in, there should be a link to log into the admin console. And that is where we are sitting at now. Or if you're running your own hardware, there's gonna be a link when you launch the server software that's gonna tell you how to get to this particular page. For a dedicated server, you would have set up the username and password in a config file and for a dedicated server host, like let's say pocket host, you're gonna find that password under the settings tab under the web interface password. Of course, if you're using a host other than pocket host, I really can't help you with guidance as to where you're gonna find that password. You're just gonna to have to go rooting around. Now, typically the admin username is, well, admin. And the password is gonna again be whatever you set up on your interface. Once you are logged in, you're gonna find that we stand here at the home page. And on the home page, the first line is gonna be the game. This is gonna tell you the game and version that the server is running. So this is clearly a Farm Sim 25 server running version 1.2.1.0. As the game goes through updates, the server will be updated and clients will also update. The versions need to be the same across client and server. So if clients are updated to, let's say, version 1.3, and the server has not yet been updated to 1.3, those clients are not gonna be able to connect, and vice versa. If the server is updated to 1.3 and the clients have yet to update, they will not be able to update until they, or they will not be able to connect until they also update to 1.3. Now there are rare exceptions to the rule, but typically that is when we are talking about a small point upgrade. For example, going from 1.2.0 to 1.2.1 may not require a server update and a client update to match, but typically you will need to make sure that client and server are matched at their versions. The next column is gonna be for server name. This is gonna be how clients are going to connect to the server. When you launch Farm Sim and you say you wanna join a game, you're gonna to need to find a server in the server name. Well, that is gonna be this name right here. So in this configuration, well, people would need to search for FK community in that server listing in order to find this server. The admin password, which is the third column down, that is gonna be the admin password in game. That is not the password to log into this interface. This is gonna be the password and log into the game and then elevate your session as admin. The game password is gonna be what players need to enter in order to actually connect to the server on the join server interface within the game. If you set this to blank, then literally anyone with the same mods on the server can connect. I highly recommend you set a password that's gonna keep the ruffians out, if you will, and therefore only people whom you've given this password to will be able to connect. We have up to 20 save game slots, just like we do on a standard PC install. This is where we can pick which save game slot we wish to activate when we start the actual server. In addition, we can pick what save game map we wish to run. Unless you have uploaded a mod map, you're gonna be limited to Riverbend Springs, Hutan, Pantai, or Zilonka. Here we can establish how much starting money do we wanna have for our farms on our server. This is basically similar to the same starting screen you would have in single player. You can say to have 100,000, 250, 500,000, 750, or $1 million per farm. You can also establish if you want a loan per farm or not. And this will establish what economic difficulty the game is gonna be running on once you launch the server. Easy, normal, or hard. This will be a read-only field. This will be the number of slots or concurrent players that can be on the server at any one point in time. You can change the game language if you wish. The save interval is defaulted to 
three hours. I typically change this to 60 minutes. I feel that auto saving once an hour is gonna be adequate. Anything lower than that, I feel is maybe a little bit excessive. If you wanted to, you could push it up to maybe two hours, but honestly, I wouldn't go beyond that. Leave the web API interval at 360 seconds. Pause if game is empty. Well, this is either a yes or no, basically. If it is set to no, then the game will run 24 seven, regardless if there is a customer or client connected to it. If you change this to instant, then when the last person logs off the server, then the game will pause until the next person joins. So let's talk about that one a little bit more. For example, if you have five people on the server and everyone disconnects for the night and we have it set to instantly, then tomorrow, maybe 12 hours pass, and then those five people join on the server again, no time will have passed in game. It'll be as if you simply saved the game and closed it as a local single player and then launch the game save five hours later or 12 hours later. If you change this to no, then if those five people log out or the last person logs out and then 12 hours pass when the next person logs in, 12 hours if your game is set to one times clock speed will have passed in game. If you set it to two times clock speed, then a full day would have passed between when the last person logged out and the next person logged in 12 hours later. So if you do set this to no, it is a very important to understand that the game will continue to run at whatever your clock speed is set at. So if it is set at, let's say five, and you log out, come back 12 hours later, two and a half days will have passed in game. So just be aware of that. Crossplay is allowed, yes or no. If this is checked, then both console and PC players will be able to join the server. Now there is still the limitation. If you have a PC only mod activated, then crossplay is gonna basically be disabled regardless if you have this checked or not, because console players will not be able to download that PC only mod through the multiplayer interface. They are effectively gonna be locked out. Once you have set all of these settings to be how you wish them to be, go ahead and click save to lock those in. Also down here on the homepage, we're gonna have a listing of which mods are active and which mods have been updated that are not active. So we can see here the MacDom pack is not activated, but is available. So we can basically check this box, hit activate, and now it is listed as an active mod. If you activate DLCs, all players must own the DLC in order to connect and join. This is not a game where people can join if they do not own the DLC. You must own the DLC if it is activated for the clients to join. Now let's talk about our save game screen. This is gonna be where we can see and manage our save games. The top here is gonna be where we are gonna have any active save games. The middle area is where we're gonna be able to upload save games. And the bottom is gonna be where we can restore save game backups. We don't have any save games in here right now, but we can upload one. So I'm going to go to choose file. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna upload save game slot 20 that I have on my local farm sim save game. And I can put this in any slot I want. I don't have to put it in save game slot 20. I'm gonna put it in save game slot one. Now that I have uploaded that, you can see the current save game is gonna be listed here under Riverbend Springs, $17 million. We have 22 hours and 36 minutes of play time on this save game and it's set to hard difficulty. From here, we can download a copy of the save game by simply clicking on the disc or we could delete the save game entirely off the server by selecting the X icon. Now we're gonna circle back to the restore save game backup section and talk a little bit more about managing your save games once we have a few save games that I can demonstrate on the server. But before I can fire up those save games, I'm gonna to need to activate some mods. So let's go ahead and go to our mods tab. And from here, we have an entry of every mod that is uploaded on the server. Right now we just have the MacDom pack that has been activated. 
We can see the status. Is it active or not on the server? Is it available on the Giants Mod Hub or not? That will be very important with respect to clients connecting to the server. You must have all the mods that are on the server in order to play on the server. If those mods are from the Giants Mod Hub and the player doesn't have them, then there will be the ability for the player to auto download those before they connect. If the server has mods that are not on the Giants Mod Hub, they will not be able to be auto downloaded. Players will have to come and download those manually and put those into their mod folder. The next section is basically a representation of the Giants Mod Hub here in this admin interface. And from here, we can download any mod on the Mod Hub just by clicking this little download, download arrow. So for example, if I wanted the placeable hedges, I can just click on this and it would go ahead and add the download to the queue and it would start to download that particular mod. You see now that it has been downloaded. It is not active and it is on the Mod Hub. We have a disk icon from here. I can click this and it would download the mod from the server to my PC and I can click on the X, and if I click on the X, it's gonna basically delete that mod off the server. In addition to getting mods from the Mod Hub, well, you can upload mods directly to the server by using the upload function. From here, we're gonna choose files. I can multi-select files from my mod folder, for example. I have 16 files here, and I can go ahead and click upload, and that's gonna go ahead and upload all of those mods to the server course, depending on the file size and how fast your internet connection is, well, it's going to vary on how long it's going to take to get those uploaded. But here you can see now that we have several mods that have been added to the server. These are all from the Giants Mod Hub, and none of them have been activated. We can come back here to our home screen. We can scroll down to our Activate Mod section, and we can basically click All. We can hit activate and now they are here in the active mods category if we come back to our mod hub well we can see that they are now all activated if we go to our log files this is where we're going to be able to see some information about the game about the server and the admin web server itself this log file for game is extremely convenient in order to try to figure out what might be going on if a player is having difficulty joining if maybe a mod is not showing up, even though you've uploaded it, this is basically the same as your game log, just in server format. We can go here to our server log. We can hit select, and this is going to show us an entry for all of our server entries. So we can see here all of the mods that we've just uploaded and where they were uploaded to. And then we can come to our web server, and we can click on that, and we can get information basically about all of the web requests from the admin interface itself. Overall, what you're gonna be coming to the log files most commonly for is in order to get this information about the game log. Up top, we have some more settings to take a look at. We can go to settings. And from here under miscellaneous, what we're most interested in is gonna be the public mod download link. We can activate that or deactivate it should we so wish. If it's not activated, then obviously it'll say activate. If it is activated, then it will say deactivate. This is the URL that you're gonna to want to give players in order to download mods directly from the server. Now, we are using Pocket Host and this little bit of information is gonna be pertinent to Pocket Host only customers. You will notice that the URL is 0.0.0.0 .0 and then there's a colon and a port number. Well, that's not gonna be a valid URL. You're gonna to need to take this URL and edit it a little bit in order to add your actual IP address in because of how Pocket Host is containerizing all of the web servers for Farming Simulator 25. The dedicated web server software is not picking up the proper IP address. You're gonna find your IP address over on your Pocket Host dashboard. It's gonna be right under the server name. A nice column that says IP. So you would plug in that address as opposed to 0.0.0.0. .0. Once you put the proper IP address in, though, people can go to this URL and they can either 
download mods individually, or they can download an entire package, which is gonna be the most convenient way of doing it. So for example, this is my server webpage in order to download the mods. Since it's on Pocket Host, again, I have substituted the actual IP address for the 0.0.0.0, .0 that was in the URL that the dedicated server software was presenting to me. But once I've done that, now I can come here, I can see a listing of all the mods that are activated on the server. I can click on any of those and it will download it directly to my downloads folder. Or what's more convenient, I can click on download all active mods and that's gonna download all the mods in a nice little zip bundle. From there, I'm going to unzip that bundle into my mods folder if I'm a player and I'll know that I have all the mods that are on the server and all of the mods versions that are on the server in my mod folder that I can go ahead and easily connect. Back to our setting screen, what you might wanna set is you might wanna add a time for the server to auto restart. This is gonna be very convenient if you want to make sure that every day the server is as fresh as possible. So you could say sometime between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. If the server is empty, just go ahead and restart it. So we go ahead and click save. And really you can pick any time that you want. And within that window of time, if no one is on the server, then it will just go ahead and auto restart. It's a good way of making sure your server is in the best condition possible. Does it required? No, by all means it's not, but it is a good habit to get into. These other links, you're really not gonna to need to worry about those unless you already know why you need a link to the map image or a link to the save game XML, you know, then you'll know, again, with Pocket Host, you need to substitute the 0.0.0.0, .0 for your actual web server IP. But what you're most likely gonna be doing here under settings is going to manage web users. And from here, we can add additional admins to our account. So we can come here and we can go add user, and then we can click here and we can change this username to let's say, let's say we're gonna call this guy a limited admin. So that's gonna be the new username for this user, limited admin. And let's set this password up to be limited, okay? From here, we can say his username is a limited admin, and we can say that he has full access to manage mods, but he does not have access to do anything other than to download save games. He can read the game log, sure. Uh, he, can, he can be a game admin, yes, which is gonna allow him to start and stop the save game, but he cannot add new users to this account. We're gonna hit save, and now let's go ahead and log in as Mr. Limited Admin and see what it can get into. So again, limited admin, and we're gonna type in our password. So we are now logged in as Mr. Limited Admin. We can see here that you can start and stop the server. Let's go ahead and go to our mods area. He has the ability to delete mods, he has the ability to add mods, and he has the ability to upload mods. So if we come here to save games, all he can do is download the current save game or save games that are on the server. He can't upload save games. He can't delete save games. That's all he has access to. So that is basically how you would add a limited admin. You can see he does not have the ability to add other accounts to the server either. In order to do that, then a full admin would have to be able to log in. So let's go ahead and do that. And we come back here to our settings. We have manager web users. So again, we can add as many different users as we need in order to manage our server. And we can give them varying permissions from having full access to the mods, the only ability to upload and download. They can't delete mods or just download mods. Save game access, we can give them full access to all save games, only able to up and download save games or download only. 
We can give them full access to the logs or just read only or no access at all. We could not make them a game admin so they wouldn't be able to start or stop the server. And if you wanna make them a user admin, then basically they are just a secondary full admin account. From your profile, this is where you can actually change your admin password if you wish to from within the admin server software. I do caution you though, if you are running a web host or renting a server from a dedicated web host, then doing this may affect your ability to connect to the server. Just check with your web host to see it where the best place might be for you to change your admin password if you feel you need to change it. Like for example, you feel someone else may have figured out how to log in. Now let's come back here to our save games and let me show you how we're gonna be managing save games and what we can do with these backups. So we have a few save games now that we can take a look at here on the save game tab. Again, we have our only save game that we have uploaded right now to the server right here for Riverbend Springs, $17 million, total gameplay time on the server and economic difficulty. If we had other save games in other save game slots, this is where we would see them all listed. From our restore save game, well, we now can open this up and we can see a drop down menu list. We can see how many saved backup copies we have for save game slot one. If we had multiple save game slots saved up here, then in theory, we would have multiple save game slot backups listed here as well. The way we interpret this is we have the year, the month and the day, the hour, the minute, we have the map, how many minutes and hours of gameplay is on the game save listed here. And it is in somewhat chronological order from oldest to newest. So we can see here we have a save game from basically 1144 server time, 1146 server time, and 1150 server time. And that corresponds with play time, time hours of 11 or 22 hours and 36 minutes, 22 hours and 37 minutes, and 22 hours and 39 minutes. Now you may ask yourself, well, why? What's the discrepancy here between here are two minutes and this is only one, and here we have four minutes and this is only two? Well, that's because the game clock on that particular save right now is running at 0.5 speed. If we had an issue with our current save game, let's say this one right here, at 22 hours and 43 minutes, well, we can click on 22 hours and 39 minutes if we wanna see if that one is a good save. We can hit restore and now our save game is at 22 minutes and 39 hours. So we have basically rolled back to this particular save game and now we can start the server up and see if this save game is good or not. Now, while we have three save games here within six minutes of each other, we're not gonna see literally every autosave that has ever happened on this particular save game. What we will see is for the first, most recent, for the last 12 hours, let's say it that way, we're gonna see several entries. So it's gonna keep several copies of save games over the last, let's say 12 hours. For the first few hours, we might see every save game every hour. And then after maybe about four save games, it might skip to every other hour. But basically we're gonna see several save games within the most recent 12 hour time span. After that, we might see one save game every day for the next few days going back. And then we might see one save game every week going back several weeks. And if this is a really long running save game, we might see one save game every month going back even further. So it does go back a long way, but the further you go back, the less number of copies of save games it keeps. Basically it's to keep the file size down, right? So this is how you can restore a save game. Maybe something's happened on the server. Maybe somebody deleted something by accident. Maybe somebody put a building down and of course it wasn't saved before they did it. Completely messed things up and they're asking, hey, can you roll the game back? like 10 minutes and so I can fix something. This is how you would do that. Maybe, maybe someone cut a tree down and it completely borked the whole server. It's happened before. 
Well, now you have the ability to come back here to this restore save game and work a little bit and try to find where do you have a save game from a point before someone cut down the magical tree that borked the server. And once you get it all back up and running, you basically dictate don't cut any more trees because it's a lot of effort to figure it out. And, well, trees are hateful little sons of bitches. any rate, I hope you all have enjoyed this rundown of the Farming Simulator dedicated server interface. Regardless, if you are running a private dedicated server on your own hardware, if you're renting a dedicated server from a host like Pocket Host, I'll feel the link down in the description below, by the way, where you can get up to 45 gigs of mod space, just saying, or some other dedicated server host, then this interface is what you're gonna be working with from a day-to-day -day basis with respect to manage your dedicated server. So it's very important that you fully understand as to what is going on with your server using this particular interface. If you've got questions, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. I love to go back, go through those and see if I can help you all out in any particular way. Until next time, happy farming.